Hello and welcome back to the Crime Reel. For this week's true crime story, we shall be looking at the life and crimes of Rex Brindley Jr. Garland Rexford Brindley Jr, known as Rex, was born on the 23rd of December 1933. He was the oldest of three children born to Garland Sr and his wife Odine. The family lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Rex left school in 1948 at the age of 15. He started working for a local plumber in Tulsa where he met Margaret Teeter who would later go on to become his wife. In 1959, when Rex was 26 and Margaret 25, they had a baby boy. The young family remained living in Tulsa and initially ran the local grocery store. Over time, Rex became increasingly successful, building up a large business portfolio. Spotting a gap in the market, he financed a 38-unit apartment complex near the Northern State University, which had a constant stream of student tenants. He also owned a steakhouse bar and nightclub. It is estimated that his personal wealth was well in excess of a million dollars by the mid-1960s. His family had now moved to a 710-acre ranch and owned, amongst other things, a Cessna 172 Skyhawk plane. He was rumoured to be a ruthless, vicious, selfish man who would use any means necessary to get what he wanted. Rex was well known locally and was described as someone who should never be crossed. On October 17, 1970, Rex visited the Swinson Chevrolet dealership in Tulsa. He was looking at pickup trucks. At the same time, a man by the name of Donald Boulding was at the same car dealership buying a Volkswagen. Rex left without making a purchase. The following morning, the truck, which Rex had been viewing, had been stolen. Donald recalled seeing Rex at the car dealership the previous day as a somewhat notorious character wearing quite a distinctive brownish coloured jacket. Rex had stood out to Donald. Donald's brother was the police chief at the time, so Donald contacted him to inform him that he had seen Rex at the car dealership the day before the truck went missing. The police started to look into whether Rex was involved in the theft. Rex believing that he was above the law was blatant in his use of the truck. He was soon arrested, charged and bailed awaiting trial. The trial was scheduled for early 1971. Donald Boulding was due to testify against Rex. Donald was married to Fern, a 28-year-old kindergarten teacher, and they had a five-year-old daughter by the name of Kim. On the morning of Tuesday, February 2nd, 1971, Donald and Fern were going about their normal daily routine. In order to save money on the cost of fuel, Donald decided to use his wife's car for his daily trip to Stroud. Fern would use the truck to take five-year-old Kim to school. As Fern got into the truck and turned the ignition, it immediately exploded. She was killed instantly and her body was found over 30 metres away in a neighbour's garden. Parts of the truck were blown over two blocks away. Subsequent investigation found that enough explosives to blow up approximately 12 cars had been placed under the driver's seat and connected to the ignition switch. The blast was so powerful that it shook houses throughout the neighbourhood, shattering their windows. As it was a cold morning, Fern had decided to start the truck to warm it up while her daughter finished getting her things together for school. Kim was still in the house when the truck exploded and luckily did not sustain any physical injuries. The weather saved Kim's life that day. Police quickly arrived at the theory that the bomb was intended for Donald and the obvious suspect in the bombing was Rex. He was arrested and despite having allegedly boasted about arranging the killing, he even told a reporter that the wrong horse got in the stall that day. He soon started to claim that he was innocent. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that Rex visited the apartment of Ralph Lee Hinkle in January 1971. Ralph was a local college student who worked for Rex and lived in the apartment complex near the university which Rex owned. Rex brought Ralph four blocks of C4 and some blasting caps which he left in a cupboard in Ralph's apartment. Shortly after, Rex instructed Ralph to borrow a 1969 Chevrolet pickup, the same model that Donald and Fern owned. Rex and Ralph took the car to an abandoned house where they met a man by the name of Archie Dale Miller. Archie was an explosives expert during the Vietnam War. 
Archie showed Rex and Ralph how to wire the car so that the explosion would be triggered by the ignition switch. On the night of February 1st 1971, Rex and Ralph went to Donald and Fern's house. Ralph wired Donald's truck, placing the explosives under the seat. Rex stood over him holding a sawn off shotgun. It is unclear whether Ralph and Archie were paid for their involvement in the crime or if they had been threatened into completing their parts by Rex. The murder trial started on November 15th 1971. It got off to an exceptionally slow start with jury selection proving extremely difficult. On the first day alone, 132 prospective jurors were excused immediately many due to their fixed opinions of the case or their opposition to capital punishment. Rex arrived at his trial wearing a red and white sports shirt and a pair of bright red trousers. He still believed that he was untouchable. His wife Margaret remained in the front row throughout the trial supporting her husband. Both Ralph and Archie testified against Rex and they both received 10 year prison sentences for their part in the crime. On Friday 26th of November 1971, after deliberating for less than three hours, Rex was found guilty of first degree murder. As he was led away from the courtroom and photographers gathered, Rex lashed out and punched a television photographer and kicked another. Following the verdict, his lawyer filed a motion for a new trial on the basis that a change of venue should have been granted in view of the extensive publicity the case had received. It was also suggested that the trial was unfair as only jurors with a firm belief in capital punishment were impanelled. This motion for a new trial was denied and on Monday 29th of November 1971, Rex was sentenced to life imprisonment. Shortly after, Margaret visited Rex in prison. During the visit, she gave Rex a radio, which was then found to contain a hacksaw. She was charged with attempting to aid a prisoner with an escape plan. However, by May 1972, Margaret had a change of heart and filed for divorce citing incompatibility and extreme cruelty. She requested all of their assets and full custody of their son. Whether she had finally escaped from her husband's brutality and control or had simply decided to get on with her life and leave her husband behind, we shall never know. The following year, in 1973, prisoners at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary, where Rex was serving his sentence, organised a three-day hunger strike to protest against their poor living conditions. Claims of lack of health care, discrimination, censorship of mail, overcrowding and appalling living conditions were rife at the prison at that time. In the three years prior alone, there had been 19 violent deaths and over 40 stabbings. However, by July 1973, the protests took a more sinister turn. A prison riot began on the 27th of July 1973. Several inmates drunk from homemade alcohol and armed with makeshift weapons went on a rampage through the prison stabbing two correctional officers. Using the public address system, they egged on other prisoners by announcing a revolution. Inmates took employees hostage before setting buildings on fire. It took police negotiators over 24 hours to secure the release of the hostages and a further two days to completely contain the riot. Three inmates died, more than 20 people had been injured, many seriously, and 24 buildings were destroyed. The total damage was estimated at that time at around $20 million, the equivalent of around $120 million today. During the confusion caused by the riots, Rex managed to escape from the prison. Along with two other inmates, he climbed the fence of the main compound and managed to hide in an industrial area of the prison where non-rioting inmates were being held. There, the three prisoners hid under a dock to escape detection when the prison grounds were swept for missing prisoners. Surrounding themselves with battery acid to prevent detection from police dogs, they hid until they had the opportunity to break through the outer fence under the cover of darkness. After Rex had been missing for nearly six weeks, he was added to the FBI's most wanted list. Soon after, he was recaptured in Belop, where he had been working as a plumber. He was returned to the prison, which despite calls for it to be permanently closed following the riots, was still operational. 
Three years later, on June 18, 1976, Rex again managed to escape from prison. Together with six other inmates, he managed to escape through a utility tunnel. He headed towards Canadian County, Oklahoma. After a few days, he came face to face with an off-duty corrections officer in a grocery store and surrendered without a fight. He appeared to have been living in the woods and was in a bad physical state at this point, seeming far older than his 43 years. Rex was eligible for parole on several occasions, but this was always denied. It could be assumed that this was, at least in part, due to the fact that he had a history of violent threats and outbursts while serving his sentence. It has been reported that he vowed to kill the reporter, who he allegedly confessed to, if he ever got the chance. He also made violent threats to the governor, Margaret's divorce attorney and the attorney who had represented him in the murder case. He spent a total of 38 years in prison before dying from natural causes on the 18th of December 2009 at the age of 76. He maintained his innocence the entire time. Thanks very much everyone for listening to that story. If you have any comments please add them down below. Thank you once again for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst, take a look at the community page. You may be interested in the competition that's on there. Goodbye.